Hi viewers, this is my another video. This video is on eukaryotic cell cycle regulation and it is useful for students who are writing CSIR, GATE, APSET, AP RESET, APPSC DLs, APPSC JLs and NEET examination. I am going to make more videos on topics from life sciences that are important in CSR, GATE, APSET, AP RESET, APPSC DLs, APPSC JLs and NEET examinations. In this video I am going to explain first cell cycle phases such as G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase and M phase and the remarkable features of these phases and also going to explain how much the time that takes each phase to be completed in the cell cycle and also I am going to explain the cell cycle analysis using fluorescent activated cell sorter which is used to measure the chromosomal content in a cell. Then I will explain the cell cycle regulation by external signals and internal signals what is the external signal that regulates cell cycle and what is the internal signal that regulates the cell cycle. Finally, restriction of replication once for cell cycle. We know that DNA replication occurs only once in a cell cycle, not more than once. If it occurs more than once, it will form chromosomes more than required number. Let us start with cell cycle phases. Cell cycle has two main phases interphase and mitosis phase and interphase has three phases growth phase 1, S phase or census phase, growth phase 2 or G2 phase. In growth phase 1 cell grows in its size. In synthesis phase DNA gets duplicated. In G2 phase again cell grows in its uh, size. After this cell enters into mitosis. In mitosis five phases are present prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. In prophase chromosomes are in decondensed form and chromosomes are covered with nuclear membrane and a centriole is present near to nucleus. In prophase, this centriole is duplicated and will form two centrioles. Centrioles move towards the polar regions of the cell and will form spindle pole. In prometaphase, chromosomes are in condensed form. In nuclear membrane disappears. After disappearance of nuclear membrane, the condensed chromosomes are released into cytoplasm. In metaphase, chromosomes are attached to spindle fold with their centromeres at center part of the cell. In anaphase, the connection between chromatids is lost and chromatids move towards pole regions. In telophase, each end of the cell will have equal number of chromosomes and chromosomes are again in decondensed form and chromosomes are covered by nuclear membrane. Also cell destroys mitotic spindle pole. Next phase is cytokinesis. In cytokinesis, cytoplasm is equally distributed to two daughter cells. With this cell cycle is completed. But some cells are not in G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase or M phase, they are in G0 phase and these G0 phase cells are also called quiescent stage cells. And example for this G0 cells are skin fibroblast cells and liver cells and G0 cells are non-proliferating cells. In our body, three kinds of cells are there, proliferative cells, completely non-proliferative cells and temporarily non-proliferative cells and temporarily proliferative cells examples are skin fibroblast cells and liver cells when external environmental conditions are favorable for the division then these cells enters into G1 phase from G0 phase but some cells in our body that are completely non-proliferative 
space and these cells are not going to divide even the conditions for uh, division is uh, favorable in their extracellular environment the next one is duration of the cell cycle phases we have discussed different phases of cell cycle such as g1 phase s phase g2 phase and m phase and the duration for the cell cycle is not same in all organisms the duration of the cell cycle is different across organisms in eukaryotic cells the duration of the cell cycle is 24 hours in this g1 phase is 11 hours and s phase is 8 hours and g2 phase is 3 hours and m phase is and m phase is 1 hour g1 phase takes 11 hours for completion and s phase takes 8 hours for completion g2 phase takes 3 hours for completion and mitosis phase takes only 1 hour for cell division coming to yeast cell yeast cell completes cell division in 1 hour 30 minutes that is 90 minutes it completes cell cycle if you see the embryonic cells in embryonic cells the cell division time is less than 30 minutes in embryonic cells the g1 phase and g2 phase are absent only s phase and m phase are present we know that embryonic cells are continuously proliferating cells during development the single cell zygote will form blastula gastrula then adult organism so for this divisions are very required and in this process we don't see the growth of cell unlike normal cell division embryonic cells don't have growth phase 1 and growth phase 2 during embryo development cell size never change only the number of cells increase so growth phase 1 and growth phase 2 are absent analysis of cell cycle cell cycle is uh, analyzed by two ways microscopical analysis and biochemical analysis microscopical analysis is used for an studying mitosis phase and to study the interface we need biochemical analysis in biochemical analysis fluorescent activated cell sorter is used for studying interface stages such as g1 phase g2 phase and m phase in this process cells are incubated with fluorescent dye and allowed for some time for incorporation of dye into the cell S then the signal from this fluorescent dye is analyzed using fluorescent activated cell sorter in this the x axis is uh, having amount of dna per cell and y axis having number of cells most of the cells are in g1 phase and the number of chromosomes or the amount of dna in per cell is only 2n number of chromosomes or 2n number of dna content is present in s phase the amount of dna is more than 2n that means still the dna is not completely duplicated still some more dna need to be replicated g2 and m phase cell enters into g2 and m phase when the s phase is over and in g2 and m phase we see 4n content of dna and number of cells are much lower than the g1 phase cell cycle regulation cell cycle is regulated by external signals as well as the internal signals cell cycle regulation is very important for completion of cell cycle as there are many phases in cell cycle these phases to be coordinated for a successful completion of cell cycle external signals in cell cycle regulation cell size nutrients polypeptide mating factors growth factors or external signals that regulate cell cycle these external signals they regulate cell cycle by regulatory point internal signals DNA replication, DNA damage and chromosome misalignment. These three are internal signals that regulate cell cycle. And these internal signals, they regulate cell cycle by checkpoints. 
in cell cycle regulation one regulatory point and four checkpoints are present cell cycle regulation by external signals as i said there are four external signals in yeast three external signals are regulating cell cycle these three are nutrients mating factors and cell size these three factors promote cell to enter into s phase from g1 phase when these factors are not available the cell cannot pass through the regulatory point and it is remains in g1 phase so to enter into s phase the cell need to pass through this regulatory point to pass through this regulatory point cell requires nutrients mating factors and cell size in yeast in animal cell the restriction point is present in late g1 phase and the restriction point is regulated by growth factor in case of animal cells when growth factor is available cell can pass through this restriction point and enters into s phase if growth factors are not available cell enters into g0 phase rather than entering into s phase and we know that g0 phase is non proliferative stage in g0 phase cell cannot divide when these growth factors are available cell enters into g1 phase again fusionist and oocytes in fusionist and oocytes the regulatory point is not present in g1 instead of that the regulatory point is present between g2 and m phase for progression of g2 to m phase fusionist requires nutrients mating factors and cell size in oocytes also the restriction site is present between g2 to and m phase and to enter into m phase the g2 phase is requires progesterone in animal cells growth factors are required to pass through the restriction point but in case of oocytes to pass through this restriction point oocytes are required progesterone hormone internal signals and checkpoints checkpoint monitors three conditions of a cell one is dna damage and second one is unreplicated or damaged dna and the third one is chromosomal misalignment and four checkpoints are present in cell one is present in g1 phase and one is present in s phase and one is present in g2 phase and one is present in m phase the checkpoint of g1 phase monitors integrity of dna the checkpoint of s phase monitors dna integrity as well as replication status of dna and g2 stage checkpoint monitors replication status of dna as well as damaged dna m phase also has one checkpoint and this m phase checkpoint monitors chromosome misalignment if any damage is present in g1 phase of dna the checkpoint of g1 phase arrests cell cycle therefore cell cannot enters into s phase if there is no damage then cell enters into s phase by crossing checkpoint in s phase if dna is not completely replicated or the replicated dna has some errors the checkpoint of s phase finds this unreplicated dna and damaged dna and stops cell to progress into g2 phase when the dna is completely synthesized and there is no damage is present in dna then cell enters into g2 phase from s phase by crossing s phase checkpoint in g2 phase the checkpoint again monitors the replication status of dna and also the integrity of dna if any damage is present in dna or if dna is not completely synthesized g2 phase checkpoint stops 
cell at this level and cell cannot pass into M phase. If DNA is not having any damage and DNA is completely synthesized, then cell moves into M phase from G to phase. In M phase, there is another checkpoint that checks for chromosome misalignment. We know that metastasis has five phases prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In metaphase, chromosomes are aligned at the center place. In anaphase, the connection between chromatids is lost and chromatids start moving towards polar regions. If chromosomes are not aligned at center place and if they are not misaligned, then cell cannot enter into anaphase from metaphase. Cell arrests the metaphase only. This is how checkpoints monitors the DNA integrity, replication status of DNA and chromosomal misalignment in G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase and M phase and therefore they ensure error free successful cell cycle. In fissionist and Wu sites, the regulation point is present between G22 M phase rather than G12 S phase. Wu sites are arrested at G2 phase and to enter into mitosis, these cells needed progesterone hormone. And this here, the restriction point is between G22 and M phase. So in fission yeast and in Wu sites, the restriction point is present between G22 M phase rather than G12 S phase. Internal signals and checkpoints. In cell cycle regulation, one regulatory point and four checkpoints are present. The regulatory point may present between G12 S or between G22 M phase. And check four checkpoints are present in cell cycle regulation. One is present in G1 phase, one is present in S phase, and one is present in G2 phase, and one is present in M phase. In G1 phase checkpoint monitors DNA integrity, and S phase checkpoint monitors the replication status of DNA, and G2 phase checkpoint monitors both the replication status of DNA and integrity of DNA. Fourth checkpoint that present in M phase which monitors the alignment of chromosomes in metaphase. ATM and ATR proteins in cell cycle regulation by internal signal. When DNA is damaged or when DNA is not completely replicated, this ATM and ATR proteins they get activated. Activated ATM and ATR proteins they phosphorylates two proteins they are called CHK2 and CHK1 proteins and these CHK2 and CHK1 proteins they inhibit the CDKs. I am going to explain about the CDKs in next video. These are the protein kinases that are very important for cell cycle progression. So when these CDKs are inhibited by ATM and ATR protein by CHK2 and CHK1, cells cannot complete cell cycle. CHK2 arrests cell cycle at G1 S phase and CHK1 arrests cell cycle at G2 phase. Individuals who have mutations in their ATM gene gets a disease that is called ataxia telangiectasia. Individuals with this disease will have dysfunctional nervous system, immune system and they develop cancers also. Restriction of DNA replication once per cell cycle. We know that replication of DNA takes place in S phase. Only once replication to be occurred in S phase, not more than once. If more than once DNA replication occurs in cell cycle, that will form chromosome numbers more than required. So to avoid this condition, cells have a proteins they are called MCM proteins which are synthesized in G1 phase and these synthesized MCM proteins in G1 phase they bind to ORC sites origin of replication centers and when they bond to origin of replication centers 
DNA polymerases and helicases they recruited to war sea centers in space. So to recruit DNA polymerases and helicases these MCM proteins are very required and these MCM proteins are synthesized in G1 phase. In S phase after replication these MCM proteins are displaced from war sea centers. Since the chromosomes are not bound with MCM proteins helicases and polymerases cannot bind to DNA again.